Hello everyone, welcome back to Blockman Editor Tutorial. In these videos, we will give you a complete introduction to the Blockman Editor. In this lesson we will get to know skill components. Let's start with how to create a skill. Enter the editor, click the skill component, we can find the create skill button. Click the create skill button, and two skill templates will appear. In this lesson, we will use basic skills for illustration. Enter the skill name and click the confirm button to complete the creation of the skill. At this point, all properties of this skill will appear in the properties view on our right. In the basic property view of skills, we need to focus on the property skill type. There are eight types of skills, namely, basic, tech, missile, reload, buff, aim and use handheld items. First, let's look at the basic skills, which are usually used to play actions, or trigger events, etc. Then, take a look at the attack skills, this type of skills are used to attack the target entity, and cause damage to the target entity. The effective range property allows our skills to hit farther targets. The larger the value is, the farther a target can be hit. The knockback distance property means that when, the skill hits an entity, it will cause a knockback effect to the entity. The larger the value is, the farther the knockback distance will be. The damage property is used to set the damage value dealt to the entity when the skill hits the entity. When the skill type is set to missile, we need to adjust the two properties of missile target and missile. In the missile target property, the missile's launch direction needs to be modified. There are seven launch direction of missiles, namely horizontal direction of camera, camera direction, horizontal direction of body, the clicked entity, self, entity, block or camera direction, and positive direction on the axis. Here we mainly look at the camera direction and self, and you can experience the other launch directions by yourself. If we choose the launch direction to be camera direction, then when we release the skill, the missile will be launched in the direction of the current player's camera. If we select the direction of the launch to be self, then the missile will be fixed at the player's current coordinate position. We usually use this method to create ranged melee skills. Regarding the missile property, here we first add a missile setting item. We can adjust the missile related parameters in the missile settings. Click the missile selection button to open the selection window, and add the missiles we prepared to the skills. We will explain the relevant knowledge of missiles in subsequent courses. If you want to let the entity launch multiple missiles, when releasing skills, you can click the add button to add multiple missile settings to configure. The start coordinates property is used to adjust the coordinates of the projectile relative to the origin of the entity when the projectile is fired. Let's set the y-axis value of the starting coordinate to 1 and 2 respectively and check the effect. When the y-axis coordinate is 1, the missile will be fired from the waist of the entity, and when the y-axis coordinate is 2, the missile will be fired from the top of the entity's head. Regarding the missile launch direction offset value property, if we enter a non-zero value and rotate around the y-axis, the missile launch will be offset horizontally. If we enter a non-zero value and rotate around the x-axis, the missile launch will be offset vertically. As for the missile direction property, it is used to adjust the direction of the missile model when it is launched. For example, we adjust the missile model to a bullet model. In order to ensure that the direction of the launch bullet is aimed at the target, it is necessary to use this property to make adjustments. Regarding the reload skill type, this type of skill needs to be used with the items that open the container function. For example, we can use this skill to reload firearms with bullets. With the filler here, we need to link the consumed items to the skill. Buff type skills are used to add buffs to entities. In the buff name property, we can choose the buff we've already created. 
The buff duration property determines the duration of the buff added to the entity after using the skill. The target type property is to choose whether this buff is added to yourself or to the skill target entity. Regarding the beam skill type, this type of skill is usually used to achieve shooting effects. We can adjust the effective length of the beam after emission in the beam length property. The effect of the beam includes two properties, one is the effect when the entity is hit, and the other is the trajectory effect of the beam in motion. Here, we add the prepared special effects to the skill, and then check the effect in running mode. Regarding the recoil property, after releasing the skill, the player's camera will rise upwards. The larger the value set here, the higher the camera will rise. Note that there is no specific effect after the beam hits the target. We need to configure the two properties of relevant skills, triggered when hitting an entity and triggered when headshot, to achieve the effect that needs to be triggered. For example, configure attack skills to repel players and damage players. Finally, let's look at the use handheld items type. This type of skill must only take effect when the entity is holding an item. If this type is selected, when using the skill, it will directly consume the items held by the entity. For example, we let the entity hold an item that consumes health points. When we use the skill, the item held by the entity will be consumed, and the entity will also start to lose health points. The cooldown time property refers to the interval between the release of the skill. If the value we set is greater than zero, it will enter the cooldown time. During the cooldown time, the skill cannot be released again. Next, let's look at the precast property. Precast refers to a preparation stage by the player entity from the time point when the skill button is pressed to the time point when the skill is actually released. When we check the enable precast checkbox, we can set the actions to be performed during this time. For example, we can set the duration of this stage in the precast duration property, or check ignore skill commands during precast, so that the entity cannot release other skills during this stage. In the same way, if we check ignore movement commands during precast, the entity cannot move during this stage. If ignore jump commands during precast is checked, the entity cannot jump. Regarding the property of all movements terminate precast, when we check this property during the precast stage, if the entity moves, jumps, or is knocked back, the skill precast will be interrupted, and the skill will fail to be released. The skill basking property is similar to the skills precast property. The difference is that the skills precast property acts before the skill is released, and the skills basking property acts after the skill is released. You can give it a try yourself. There are three ways to cast skills, namely click icon, click target and long press. First look at click icon. Click icon requires us to configure the skill icon. Click the icon selection button and determine the skill icon in the selection window. Or you can find the appropriate icon from your file folder, then drag and drop it to the icon selection button. Then we need to determine the skill icon position Click the set icon position button. Then in the pop-up window, click the plus sign to confirm the position of the skill. If you prefer click target to release the skill, you need to check the click target property. Regarding the long press property, when we check it, the player can release the skill by long pressing the icon. The specific long press release time is set by long press duration. When you want to continuously release the skill by clicking the icon, you can check the enable of long press for successive firing. In this way, you can continuously release skills by long pressing the icon. If you want to control the speed of the continuous release of skills, you can also control the time interval by adjusting the value of the successive firing interval property. That's all for this video. We hope it can help you on your way to a great creator. If you want to know more about the editor, you can comment below the video or post on the official forum. See you in the next video.